Alright, ready for a disclaimer? Here it is. I know that if I change the gears in this axle, I gotta change the gears in that axle. I'm not an idiot. I'm gonna do both. Just not in the same video, most likely, because I think each one's gonna be pretty long. But in the end, we're gonna have four 11s here and four 11s there. Alright, watch me. It's a nine and a quarter Chrysler and a Dana 44. Yeehaw. Alright, I'm going to apologize for the shakiness of this because, uh, well, quite frankly, um, my, sorry about that squeak, my tripod doesn't fit under here. And, I forgot my light, hold on. Alright, back with the light. But anyway, I replaced most of my brake hardware not too long ago. And, if you look side there you can see that little toothed gear and that's where this guy is gonna come in and what you're gonna do is you're gonna get them up underneath and it should just go back the other way oh there went my light but anyway you're gonna wanna Move it opposite of the direction it's flanged. Oh. Like the teeth are cut at an angle. It's kind of hard to see. But if you can get underneath it and spin it out, your drum will actually slide right off. And to give you a better shot, I'll show you this one. Now, every time we put the emergency brake on, it pulls up on this lever, which turns, oh, pulls up on that lever, which turns that gear. And that pushes these brake pads, sorry, zoom out, out a little bit. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in from the back side with your little spoon, and you want to turn it the opposite, the way that the teeth are angled, and that'll help you get your brake drum off. All right? Hopefully most of this, if I can fit my tripod under the truck, won't be quite so bad. But right now it's uh, kind of so bad. Sorry. Do my best. Not a pro. So, um, again, sorry about the squeaks. I don't know if you can see this, but I put two tick marks on this side, two tick marks there. One tick mark this side, one tick mark there. I try to always put my tick marks up. But mostly what you're going to do to remove this, and I shoved a rag up into the gears, is you got to get this center pin out, which I would have sworn this thing had a posi. But as it turns out, I might have sworn wrong. But you take this little 5 16 bolt out. Hopefully you're not... Uh, Try not to embarrass yourself on YouTube. There's that bolt. Set that right to side. Roll this back. Pull my rag out. And then that pin. Hopefully. Oops, there it goes. We'll just drop right out. And there's your pin. Set that in the rag. I like to try to put my bolts back when I can. Alright, now you can push in on your axle shaft and fish out your C clips. thinking I would have a magnet on me. Oops, there went that one. Push in on this one. There went that 
down. Put these together with my pin. And then I should be able to... And if you got any problem with your wheel bearings, now will be the time to change them, which I don't think I do. I probably will end up changing those seals, though, just... Alright, hopefully all that worked. Um, by, that, by that, all that worked, I mean my camera, because for some reason when I pulled the axle shafts out, I bumped and it has to recover now. But anyways, you got these keepers for... One half inch each. Put those over there. That's one of the things I actually really appreciate about making YouTube videos is the fact that I'm able to go back and play everything all over again and figure out where everything went when I took it apart. Okay, we don't want to take that top one way out just yet all right now we're to the tricky part so if you look in through here and in through here on these sides there are no shims. Oops, sorry, I didn't get both. Of them. There are no shims like a GM. This one has a set of twisted uh, spool thingies, like a uh, GM corporate 14 bolt. And yeah, you can kind of maybe see the threads there and the threads there. So what we got to do is back that off a little bit. And honestly, I'm just going to back off one side because I'm hoping that helps me uh, when it goes to put this thing back in. So you need a specialty tool for that, and luckily, I got one. Oops, sorry, I just put that right in your way. Okay, got to go get the tool. Oh, bump my camera. All right, well, uh, I'm not going to lie. I already cheated and tried it, but... This is what the gadget looks like. And in a little bit I'll show you where it goes. But anyways, you slide it all the way in there and it engages with that. May not be able to do this one-handed. Okay, hold on, I'll be back. All right, now that it's engaged, it goes in basically like a reverse, a reverse bolt. You're sticking the bolt head in to loosen it and it doesn't take much there's not a ton of preload on it or at least not on this one and now I did that right because I'm not changing the carrier well, I mean I am changing the gear so we'll adjust a little bit but that might at least give me a point to start Right or wrong, we'll find out. You watch me to the end, and then tell me, was I smart or dumb? But here's the hardest part. Slide that out of the way. Keep a little bit of pressure on it. You know, I probably should have slid that axle tool out. Yeah, let's slide that axle tool out. Sorry, y'all. Are you still looking in the right spot? Nope. There we go. Get 
this set. Then there's this one. Then this sucker. Should just come right out. Third time's the charm. right in there see how it's like hex shaped yeah that's where we're going ooh there's some crud in there too but we're gonna knock this guy out we got some paint marks on him maybe somebody's been here before hmm. all right time to clean all right I'll try to do this without well what without blocking as much of your view as possible. But what you need is an inch and a quarter socket. Well, first off, take off your drive shaft, which I did. It's suspended over here. Inch and a quarter. Go ahead into here. Go. Bangity, bangity. Boogity, boogity. And hopefully, yep, that came right off. Don't lose that washer just in case. Don't point at this hand right away. Nope. Ah, sorry. Anyways, I put the nut back on. Gave her a couple more smacks and she came out. No. And there's my gear with crush sleeve. You want to save all that. And then we're gonna take, sorry, we're gonna take this bearing. Once we press it off, we're gonna make a setup bearing out of it. Somebody's been here before. I'm seeing too many marks. They almost look like junkyard marks. Which isn't surprising. Alright. Turn my camera off. Oh. Now, now you gotta get a drift. And like this bearing is pretty low out. But get a drift. You're going to knock the this side race that way and this side race this way. Nice nice long. I actually have a brass drift for that. All right. Now you see why on all those TV shows they do these out of the truck. It's easier to see and it's easier on you. from the other side.
There you go again. All right. Hold on. Oh, that's my face. Sorry, you have to stare at my mug. I need some smaller camera stick. What? Uh. All right, you see those notches in the top and the bottom? There's a notch on both of them. And that's where you're going to hit with your hammer. To knock your races out. Okay, completely knock those out. Alright, see you over at the press. So, um, not much going on today. I pressed the bearing off of my old gear, my old pinion gear, and uh, that's the uh, pinion bearing. What I'm going to do is make a setup bearing and I would sh 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 grind it all up and be good. So, it's Monday. And as you can see here, I've cleaned out the inside of that bearing to the point where it, I just pull it off and on. Well, with two hands I can. But anyways, I'm going to take and transfer this shim over to that side just as a starting reference point. Put the old crush sleeve back on. I'm going to say I think this thing spun at one point because that's... That crush sleeve's got there's like a sharp edge on it. And, uh, anyways, I gotta put my new races in. And then I'm gonna use the new nut and the new washer. Torque this puppy down to spec. And then, uh, check my depth. Alright, let's go. In case you're wondering what the gear ratio I'm replacing, this is this gear's got 14 teeth on it. This one's got oh crap, what did I just count? 44, I believe. Anyway, I did the math. 3.21 to 1 ratio. So we're going 3.21 to 411. So yay! <laughs> All right, I highly recommend. You go to your local Harbor Freight, get yourself a seal and bearing race driver. Because it'll make driving your seals and bearing races easier. Now you have to excuse me because I'm right handed. Making sure it started in okay. <laughs> and we're a little crooked. Excuse me while I get a regular punch. One of my homemade brass drifts. They got a long, long time ago. Go. 
I'd have to slide it on up now to put the race driver back in. I like to feel up in there like with my fingernail, make sure it's completely seated. Yep, you heard out change tones? Yeah, it's seated. Alright. I hope I wasn't in the way for all that. But now I'm gonna go pound the other one in from the other side. We're gonna put the bearing in and then the actual seal. Or you yell at me to comment bearing first. And now the seal. Oops. Come on, stupid. but it works. Woo! You're gonna get to see a lot of my face in this video, which I don't usually do. it is 25 inch pounds that's the goal mm, and let me guess this pinion that's a different size than the old one size. Yep, different size. close and see what it is. Ha! 
Twenty-five inch pounds. Let's see what our depth is. So we got a unique set of circumstances here. This gear is marked with a K026. Sorry, K026. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's there. And usually they're marked on the end with the pinion depth. Uh, for Like I've done a GM 12 bolt twice. And I helped a buddy do, a, I think it was a 4 to 9 inch. And they usually have the pinion marked with the pinion depth. But I don't know what K026 means. I thought maybe it was like another number, like an 8. But then that would make this 8 inches deep, which it isn't. Long story short, I finally called Yukon Gear and Axle that makes USA Standard Gear. And they told me that's just the inspector's mark. And I should put 32 thousandths of shims in and basically check it and run it. Which seems very odd to me. Why well, you wouldn't mark them with a specific measurement, but then I get what they said. They said that almost nobody checks it anyway. <laughs> so we're going to do that. So that means you have to get a little bit out of sequence of how I normally do it. And we're going to go ahead and change the gear on this carrier. I'm not going to change the carrier bearings yet because, quite frankly, if I get a bunch of gook and dust and dirt and bearings. I want them to be the old bearings, not the new bearings. But we'll put them, the uh, new gear on, mark it, and check it out. Don't forget these should be um, left-handed threads, not right-handed. So you want to spin your impact gun in reverse to get them off. Okay, watch me.
All right. 65 foot pounds on all these. Loctited, ready to go back in for temporary. Like I said, these I'm going to change these carrier bearings out after we get everything set up and I know we're good. Because all that grit and junk. Know what I mean? Alright, I'm going to try and wrestle this puppy up in. You're going to have to excuse me again because like I said before, I am right-handed. Sorry if I get in your way a little bit. punch marks one punch mark like I said I punch them I've seen a lot of guys on videos and stuff just put like a punch here, but the problem is that doesn't tell you which side's top and bottom. Like this is all assembled and then machined as one unit. So you really, really don't want to jack that up. Alright, that's not going anywhere. Way too much slope still. Roughly thirty five thousandths of backlash, which means I gotta loosen up this side just a hair, tighten that side up just a hair. Right at 20, so I'm 35 to 20. Got like 18. Ooh, that's really close. Sorry if I'm in the way. We're right at five. Now the directions say 
six to nine or six to eleven I think so we're one thousand under but I think all we're doing is a pattern test and we should be pretty good for that Try to bring you in. Oh. Let's see what I can do. All right. Hmm, you're in my way. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to do this a little bit different. You have to excuse me while I rotate this. Wow. I'd say it's about as spot on as you're going to get. Um, this would be the coast, no. This would be the drive side. It's pretty centered. And there is no paint left the whole way across. Got a little bitty, bitty bit right there. A little bit back in that corner, but uh, I mean, I'll take it. I like it. I like it a lot. Now comes the fun part where I get to take everything back apart and then put it together for real. And we'll check our pattern once again after I put new carrier bearings on and put the actual pinion on. Okie dokie, here we go. So, my bearings pressed on now. All my pressing on and off is done. Uh, pressed all new bearings under this that's why it's sitting on cardboard the one thing I will recommend if you're gonna do this is first off if you don't have a press take it to a machine shop or a garage that has a press that will do it for you second off is with this bearing the cage sits lower than the race or higher depending on how you look at it so always use your old races to press these tapered roller bearings on but what I did was I took my old race and I put it in the press so that it was only touching the old race it wasn't touching any of this in here and pressed it on and that worked out pretty good but we got our shim in there you can see it um, putting everything back together is gonna be kinda just the same steps I went over last time just for real this time and uh, yeah, not a whole lot to talk about except to just put it together so I'm not gonna bore you with it because you already seen it. We're going to skip ahead to the point where I'm ready to check my pattern again. Oh yeah, and pre-coat your bearings too with a little bit of oil. I'm going to do that here in a second. Um, that's just something I had on the shelf. I'm going to go, that's not the oil I'm actually going to fill this thing with. I'm going to use some name brand stuff. But, uh, yeah. Oh, and I am going to change the wheel bearings. But I probably won't do that off camera. And it's time for the new Crush Steve. Don't forget that. Okay, let's go. All right, I got the bearings lubed up. I got the pinion back in, and it's confession time. The correct rotational drag on that thing when you check it should be about 19 inch pounds, which I got. I'm just a, I mean, it doesn't measure exactly in a 19, but like 18 something. Tick, tick. It's good. And uh, for those of you who are going to bash me for using an impact gun instead of a giant torque wrench, I say more power to you for being able to do that because I can't crawl underneath there. I've never been able, I've tried it a couple times to squeeze and pull and get that bearing uh, or that crush sleeve to crush just by, you know, my own force of will. So, I mean, it, it, it takes too much out of me. All right. Let's clean those 
mounts off, put the slide the carrier in and get going. Alright, time for a great big heave. Oh. Yeah, don't want that thing in the way. One. Oops, slip. Oogly doogly. Let's get to see if we can slide them bearings around a little bit. of these I highly recommend getting two of these adjuster tools Had to get that beautiful thing out. But anyway, decided to go ahead and do the wheel bearings. I mean, I'm right there. So, knock that seal out. Go out my slide hammer. I'm gonna knock this seal out. And also, I plan on doing the seals either way. Because let's face it, they're toasty. But the best way to get the bearing out I found is to use a slide hammer with the three jaws and actually knock that inner cage out and then pull the race out. So knock the seal out, knock the cage out, knock the race out. Okay, bye. All right, just got my little seal driver, tap, tap, tap it in there. Good to go. Gonna do the other side. I did put a little oil on the uh, bearings just so they don't start completely dry and uh, yeah, I gotta wait for the auto parts store to get my seals in. I know what you're thinking. Why well, would I mean this truck is pretty crappy, but my kid loves it. So we're gonna try to save it as much of it as we can anyway. Yeah, as much of it as we can. Okay. I don't know why putting new parts on rusty old junk makes me feel happy, but it does. Um all right, gonna slam the axles back in. I got new bearings and seals installed. Uh, I just figured, you know, there really wasn't anything wrong with the wheel bearings. The seals were crusty, I'll admit that, but the wheel bearings look fine. But at the same fact is, if the seals were that old, the bearings were probably that old, and I'm right here. It was like another 50 bucks. So, whatevs, man. All right, I'm gonna slam that into there. I'll see you back over underneath there. Alright, so I'm going to try to do this as best as I can, but it's basically just the reverse of the previous operation. Where... Go ahead, make sure to wipe your stuff off. And I 
personally, oops, I just dropped that down my stupid sleeve. I'm going to wipe it off again. Huh, looks like my magnet ain't going to be strong enough. Hold on. Alright, I'm going to try and show you this. And that's in. All right, once again. Ouch, that was my head. Off of a shock bolt. I guess they don't really move back very far. We'll, we'll find out if the pin doesn't go in. Make sure with your pin you have a hole side. You want that that bolt has to go through that hole. Yep, there's something wrong there. Shouldn't have to force anything, what she said. It wasn't that great. There we go. Oop, too far. Right out the top. Oop, no, we're down at the bottom. Again, that should be about right. Let's wipe this bolt off. There we go. Our lovely, lovely. Actually, we're gonna, we're gonna say you're like rah, 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 you'll never get that back up. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, this isn't the best of circumstances. Honestly, I don't see myself ever doing that again. <sighs> All right, put the cover on, fill it. All right, this stuff not paid sponsor but this stuff says that uh, 
you can return your vehicle to service immediately upon a application. So we'll see how well it does. Start at the top. Oops. All right, you guys don't need to watch this, but I'm going to fill it soon, put the brake drums back on, be done. So by the fact we have something else in the shop, you should tell that the Ram charger's out. And I got a mess to clean up. But first, before we get to the review, full disclaimer, I'm going to use the same review for two separate, or three separate videos detailing the buildup of... A Dodge Ram Charger because quite frankly I changed all three things at once that being the intake manifold and both the front and rear end and another disclaimer I don't have a really good way to test the front end because it has a spool in it and I can't put the hubs in and put it under load on the road and I'm not gonna go out off-road and too much for it because even if I did you wouldn't hear it if it was misaligned anyway but all right on to the coolness disclaimer I did do both axles they both have 411s but the Speedmaster well what you call it intake manifold on it and it runs good Idles comfortably at 700 RPM, roughly. Well, if you look straight onto it, it's probably a little closer to 800. I wonder why it looks that way on the camera. I don't know, Nino doesn't line up. Well, actually, now I'm looking at it, it's a little high there. I don't know, 800, 900. Good enough. Temps are good. I mean, it's never idled like this before. We're gonna go get some gas and get this thing safety inspected because, you know, Pennsylvania. Um, I won't be able to talk too much while I drive until I get up on the highway due to the fact that this thing's a stick shift that's a steering wheel and I only have two hands okay until we get going all right so here we are driving down the road believe it or not according to the speed over doing somewhere close to 50 mile an hour I never did fix that because it's not calibrated anyway but for the field we're driving along and we're doing roughly 2,000 rpm I almost wish I would have went a little steeper maybe a set of 456s but I mean it's not bad enough that I'm going to go back and redo anything uh, the 35s and the 411s seem to work really well um, the Speedmaster intake manifold fits snugly it performs as good if not better I mean it's not popping banging whenever I let off the throttle they used to go pop 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 and that and it was always a fight I could either get this truck to idle or I could get it to run and I kind of settled for a balance of crappy and a little bit of both but now like whenever I put my foot into it before I was constantly rowing between uh, third and fourth gear so I'm going to consider everything a success I'm sorry if you're watching this and you know you're watching 
watch all the videos and you get the same review. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a disclaimer before I do the review that the review is going to be the same on all three videos. But for, I don't know, roughly a thousand dollars is what I put into it. It's a totally different vehicle. Um, I think fixing the tie rod ends and that ball joint have definitely tightened up the steering. <laughs> Which I know shouldn't be a surprise, but uh, it's definitely made it more tame. I'm driving along, like I can accelerate in top gear. Everything seems to be functioning as is. We're gonna go get this thing safety, and uh, I'm gonna say that's a wrap for this video. Oh, and it starts out in second now. Where before I had to start out everything in first gear, and then as soon as I got going in first gear, shift to second because first gear you just ran out. It was a super granny, granny, granny low. But like I said, it's 